Hi there, Andrew Bell with you once again. Well, spring is certainly living up to its traditional activity with lots of buyers entering the market and some really strong activity, especially from interstaters. There seems to be greater momentum of people than ever wanting to move from Sydney and Melbourne to the Gold Coast, driven not only by the housing affordability issues, but just simply wanting to escape the congestion and the lack of sense of community that comes from big cities wherever they are in the world. This is really proving a significant support to the Gold Coast property market with so many added buyers. There's of course a lot of conversation about the Commonwealth Games. Many people ask why the Gold Coast was so keen to get the Commonwealth Games. Personally, I thought it was great vision. That's now starting to show itself in results that are surfacing. Where for example, we see that the Gold Coast economy is the beneficiary of some 500 million a year from the sports industry. That's double what it was just five years ago. The industry is forecast to explode further on the back of major coups such as the signing of the Spanish golfing champion Sergio Garcia for this year's Australian PGA and of course the actual holding of the Games in April next year. The new figures show that sport is a growth market for the Gold Coast. It will generate $657 million in our economy by 2023, whereas just five years ago it was only $277 million. The Gold Coast City Council research shows that when athletes and their entourage come to the Gold Coast, they stay longer and spend more money, and this is precisely the type of business that we're trying to attract. This is showing a greater return for the ratepayers who have invested in many of the Commonwealth Games infrastructures, and it is really starting to pay dividends, and will do so for decades to come. It's estimated by 2023 that some 14,470 jobs will be relating just to the sports industry alone. Two other quick pieces of information that relate to the property market in general. In August, 55,200 new jobs were taken up according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics. And this is the biggest increase in nearly two years. There have been nearly a quarter of a million jobs added in the past six months alone in Australia. And of course, that results in more buyers for all forms of real estate. Unemployment remains at 5.6%, only because there's been an uptick in the number of people entering the workforce. And we're starting to have more confidence that jobs are available. And so we see this increasing number of people ending the job force. Now, full-time employment, again, accounted for the bulk of the gains, rising by some 40,000 jobs. And employment is now increasing at an annual rate of 2.7%. This is great news for our overall economy. There is a significant shift in the makeup of buyers at present. The latest housing finance figures shows that the tough rules on lending to investors have led to a sharp fall in loans to investors, particularly in Sydney. However, at the same time, loans for first home buyers have surged, and that's wonderful news. Changes to lending practices were driven by APRA, which tightened its lending rules in March, and as I say, it's really been felt in Sydney, where listings are up on a year ago, and price levels have pegged. This is actually good news for the property market, as it is important to have Sydney and Melbourne markets cool as they were vastly overheated. It's a totally different story here on the Gold Coast, where the market has been very sane and has substantially lagged behind the growth that we've been seeing in Sydney and Melbourne markets. As a result, by comparison, we stand out as great value, which is why we're attracting an ever increasing number of people out of Sydney and Melbourne. It's also why we need to have the development that the Gold Coast Council has been approving so that we can match the demands for housing for these people migrating to the wonderful Gold Coast. Before I sign off, can I confirm that our ball of a couple of weeks ago raised 162,000 for muscular dystrophy and was one of the largest fundraising nights on record, taking the total funds raised for muscular dystrophy to 3.2 million. Half of this money goes straight into buying the vital equipment for young families who are struggling to cope with all the equipment needs to support their kids. And the other half goes into a research fund, which continues to look for the eradication of this disease. Well, that's it for this fortnight. Stay safe and I look forward to seeing you with lots of good news in early October.